Welcome to the Line Life Podcast. I'm Jeff Postlewaite, Senior Editor of TND World, and today we're bringing you more stories of the grit, courage, and inspirational teamwork that it takes to be a line worker. Hi, this is Amy Fishbach, and I'm the Field Editor for TND World Magazine. Thank you for tuning in to the Line Life Podcast. For this episode, I'm here with two special women who have made their mark on the line trade. The first is Susan Blazer, the Lead Line Technician Program Coordinator at Metropolitan Community College, Kansas City. Susan was also featured in our four-part Women on the Line podcast series and also in an article that was published in the 2023 Line Worker Supplement. It's wonderful to have her featured on today's podcast. Susan, to begin, can you talk about your training center for Metropolitan Community College, Kansas City, and how you're preparing your students for careers in the line trade? So we have a new training facility in Kansas City. We've moved out to Independence. So we actually have an inside training field now as well as an outside. So we're training them to be safe, qualified candidates to go out into the utility industry and start their apprenticeships, safety being the main goal. That's wonderful, Susan. Congratulations on the new training center. And also, what do you see in the future for line work, and how are you preparing them for the skills that they'll need down the road? There's a lot of things that have changed in line work, but there are still some things that are basic, and you do this the same thing. I've got some NUS videos from the early, mid-80s, and everything they talk about still pertains. How we do things, how it's going to react, all still pertains. So we bring them in, we spend eight weeks just teaching them how to climb in the summertime. That usually helps those that want to self-select out do that. And then we move on to the next two semesters to do more extensive work off the pole. We spend 85% of our time in the pole field on the pole. So this prepares them real world. And I know Lyme will say, oh, we don't climb that much anymore. I understand that. But if you can do it off of a pole proficiently, get yes. in a bucket's a piece of cake. Yes, so, I totally agree. Yeah. And my the instructors that I have, yes. Ed's got over 60 years of experience doing line work. Between the five of us that have, there are several hundreds years of experience. So they're brutally honest with the students. So sure. they they know exactly what they stand. We're, we're nice about it, but they, they know if you can't retain information or follow safety rules, you're not going to stay in the program. I'm not going to contribute to any fatalities that are going on in the industry. So we set them up to be successful. And I tell them all the time, you know, we can make you a safe, qualified candidate, you know, for an apprenticeship, but I can't change your personality and make you successful in an interview. That's on you. So we work on that also. (laughs) And Susan, I know our TND World readers and subscribers know you very well from your features in the magazine. But can you just talk briefly about your history in the line trade? So I started my apprenticeship in 89 and completed it in 1992, becoming the first female at Kansas City Power and Light and in the state of Missouri, which at the time was really not a big deal because I had life going on and never really recognized that. And so staying in the field, I went in 2008, I went into the training department and started writing the curriculum and the training for linemen and the 11 other crafts at Kansas City Power and Light. So I got exposure to the underground and the cable splicers and meter shop substations, helping them write their curriculum and their training. So opportunity came up to go to the Metropolitan Community College and teach, and that's really what my passion was. So 21 years at Kansas City Power and Light, 15 years at the Metropolitan Community College. I was telling Ed the other day, the program's been going on for 17 years, and I've been there 15 years because I came in at the last semester, and uh, we have had five females come through that are now journeyman linemen. One of them is a journeyman traffic controller. So... Five females in 15 years for me is mm-hmm. phenomenal. That's I am so thrilled. Yes. And we have a female that's coming in for next year. Nice. So I'm always looking for those females, start building up that network and supporting the women that uh, we know have a tough road right. and all those pioneers that are heading down that road. And your own daughter, Randy, works for Amron, Illinois. Can you talk about what it's like having a daughter who is also a line worker? 
it's pretty incredible because there's not too many women that can say, yep, I'm a journeyman and so is my daughter. Right. <laughs> not my son, but my daughter right. is actually a journeyman. She's doing really well. She loves line work. She works a lot of overtime. Mm -hmm. She's learning a lot. Uh, she's managing having twins that are 20 months old and work and life and still having fun. But yeah, I'm incredibly proud for my background where I came from. I would have never thought that I was would be where I'm at today. And mm -hmm. I'm certainly proud that my daughter has honored me enough to follow me in my footsteps. That's wonderful. Well, Susan, thank you so much again for joining us for the Line Life podcast. Thank you very much for having me. Next, we're going to feature an interview with Corey Roosh, who I've profiled in TND World magazine in our Women and Line Work article, which was featured in the 2023 Line Workers Supplement a few years ago. And Corey and her team have traveled from Canada to Bonner Springs, Kansas to compete in the International Alignments Rodeo. Most recently, they competed on the senior team, and a few years ago, they climbed to the top in the senior division. They also competed again last year. Corey, to begin, can you talk about how you got interested in the line trade and how long you've been a line worker for Hydro One? Well, it was one of those fluky things. I was taking forestry. I was a forestry tech at Sir Sanford Fleming College in, in Canada, mm -hmm. and it, they had a job board, and I happened to see they were hiring females in the power line maintainer trade. So I said, well, what the heck? Let's try it. And I applied, was one of the lucky ones to get an interview, and I got the job, and that was in 1988. And I haven't looked back, so it's been 35 years. I've, I've been on the tools the whole entire time, climbing, bucket work, working the RBDs. Yeah, I'm still working hard and still being active in the trade. That's fabulous. And what's a day like in the life for you right now, Corey, in the field? It depends at work. Our work is very busy with everything. Like we have jobs that we have to do, but then we have a lot of trouble calls, a lot of motor vehicle accidents up our way too. So we could be doing a job and then all of a sudden get called off and go and fix up, you know, a motor vehicle accident where sure. a pole's been hit. So it's every day is a whole new adventure, I say. That's why I like it because you're always using your, your brain every day. It's never the same thing every day. It's always different. And I know the utility you work for, Hydro One, has hired some women to work in the line trade. What do you think it's going to take for them to succeed in the utility industry? They've hired about 12 or 13. Ooh, um, nice. There's some that have their four years journeyman and they've written the Red Seal. Mm -hmm. I've always said, if you want to be a female in the trade, you have to give 110% every yes. single day because mm -hmm. you are under the microscope all the time. It doesn't yes. matter how many years you have on. They're the ones everybody is looking at. So being a female in the trade, you have to take that responsibility, knowing that you are setting the, the goals and for every every other female that's coming in. So if you're not liking it, you, you got to find something else. Absolutely. And what is your advice for the women coming up at the line trade? You have to enjoy your job. You have to like the outdoors. You have to be physically fit. Yes. And you, like I said, you have to understand that you are in the limelight. Like there, there can be 10 guys standing there and three of them could be doing nothing. And if you're the female doing nothing, they're going to pinpoint you. Yes. So you have to make sure you understand that you, you have to, I always call it MacGyvering. You have to figure out how to do something, how to make things work sometimes. It's not black and white. There's always that gray area. Yes. So you have to be able to figure out mechanically how to do things. You don't have to be an electrical engineer. Right. It's more about being able to use your hands and use your brain to make things work and figure things out and making sure that everybody stays safe and comes home at the end of the day. Thank so you much for joining much. us for the Line Life podcast. Awesome. And I have some exciting news for our Line Life podcast listeners. My article, Training Women on the Line, which was featured in the 2023 TND World Line Worker Supplement, is a regional finalist in the ASBPE ASB Awards for Journalism. And to read the full story, you can check it out on our website at www.tdworld.com. And you can also go to linelife.podbean.com to listen to a narrated version of this article in our In Case You Missed It series. Thank you for listening to the Line Life Podcast. This episode of the Line Life Podcast was written, recorded, and edited by Amy Fishbach. It was produced by Jeff Postelwaite. That's me. To listen to past episodes, visit www.tdworld.com backslash podcasts or find us at Podbean. 
You could also drop us a voice memo or message at linelifepodcast at gmail.com with your comments on this episode. We'd love to hear from you. Please follow this show on Podbean or your favorite podcasting app to be updated when new episodes are released. Thank you for listening.